restoring Illinois to greatness. This is Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Policy Institute and hosted by AM560's Dan Proft. Dan Proft back with John Tillman, president and CEO of the Illinois Policy Institute, IllinoisPolicy.org. John, uh, Trump can't win a general election. Discuss. (laughs) <laughs> that is the political establishment in Washington, D.C.'s point of view, and uh, we've been talking in the past about how I think it's fascinating that the political establishment, the ones that, that Trump is feeding the rebellion against, they can't imagine that Donald Trump might actually be able to make an argument and persuade people. Here's what I think is interesting about this. Let's just assume for a moment Trump is the nominee. Hillary Clinton, by the way, equally unpopular, and her brand is set in stone. People really just don't like, Democrats don't like Hillary Clinton, as evidenced by uh, Bernie Sanders giving her a run for her money, even though she's going to prevail for the nomination. But over on this side, Donald Trump, an ever-evolving chameleon. He is absolutely going to start pivoting. He's absolutely going to start changing his little dynamic a bit to be a little broader. He can change his dynamic. At but some point, he'll stop insulting other candidates' wives. It precisely. That would be helpful. Precisely. Yeah. Well, he'll start insulting other candidates' husbands. Yes, right. Yes. <laughs> he'll just pivot. More pleasurable. He'll pivot, right. Yes. And that will, by the way, be popular. So, so the idea that Trump can't win, I think, is preposterous. In addition to that, the demographic nature of what's going to happen in 2016, I think, is a, a hidden story and an unintended consequence. Uh, to, to go through the numbers very quickly... Uh, Obama got 93% of the black vote, 71% of the Hispanic vote, 67% of single women, and 60% of millennials. He, the Democrats have to run up these supermajorities to win the big states, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and be competitive in Ohio, Virginia, etc. The other side of the coin is that American voters really don't like Democrats. Romney got 59% of the white vote. I believe the white vote is going to turn out in record numbers, and it's going to go into the low to mid-60s for the Republican nominee, no matter who it is. Those numbers, because it's such a big base, will swamp whatever Hillary does with the other categories. Uh, Speaking of the no matter who it is, Ted Cruz, a Fox News poll that came out on Thursday, had Ted Cruz closing nationally to within three points. Within the margin. Yeah. Uh, But now that's not the same thing as where he finds himself in the 20 remaining states with primary elections, but it's still indicative of a closing. And it seems to me that the the anti-Trump forces have uh, drawn the Maginot line in Madison, Wisconsin, April 5th, that primary, Scott Walker endorsing Ted Cruz. And this seems to me like their last best chance to try to derail a Trump uh, straight up win in terms of getting the requisite 1237 delegates and uh, helping perhaps perhaps for Cruz to build a little momentum between winner take all states that are left and some of the big states with proportional distribution of delegates to keep Trump under 1237, close the gap between Cruz and Trump. And then go to that uh, contested convention that, ironically, neither Trump nor Cruz want, but everybody in the Beltway does. Right, right. I think what's interesting about, by the way, I'm going to be going over to Wisconsin and doing same-day registration. Uh, I, don't, sure. I don't know if you know you can do that if you're from Illinois. Yeah, sure, yeah, why not? You just have to have somebody that says you live in Wisconsin. I think you should come with me. That wouldn't be voter fraud at all. Uh, but the the interesting thing, I think, is the question about Kasich's role in all of this and these uh, Midwest and Northeast primaries. There's this now school of thought that Kasich should stay in to pull moderates away from going over to Trump and keep him down on the proportionality and tighten the the allocation of delegates between Cruz and Trump, which is something I had not heard before and I thought was kind of interesting. Well, Trump, I mean, excuse me, Kasich is going to have to start beating Marco Rubio in the (laughs) States uh, if he wants to be particularly impactful since he he finished fourth out of three in Arizona <laughs> on Tuesday. Um, I mean, yeah, now he did beat the other 13 candidates who are right. no longer in the race. That's right. But it's going to be important. He Trump did that. Yeah. yeah look, it, look how good I am. It, it's going to be important that, uh, you know, John Kasich put, put uh, some numbers together. But you're right. In some of these northeastern states, perhaps Kasich uh, can provide a little bit of cover for Cruz. And really, even though Kasich says, I'm not trying to take down Trump, that's what everybody wants. That's the role everybody wants Kasich right. to play. I, th- I think the, the John Kasich show, I think John Kasich wakes up every morning and looks in the mirror and kind of says, why don't they love me? I am so obviously better. It reminds me, of, we've joked about the Dukakis thing from 1988. I can't believe I'm losing to these guys. You know, John Kasich yeah. thinks he's, he thinks he's divinely inspired to be president and he can't figure this out. He's just not very likable. Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, actually, none of them are. Think about it. Not a single candidate left of the five is really what I would call. Although Bernie might be kind of fun to, if you're if you're inclined this way, go to Colorado and get some legal pot and get stoned with. But look, other than that, look forward to the next eight months of a race to the bottom. 